Speaker Pelosi's press conference. And I'm joined now by two Democratic members of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Jackie Speer of California and Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. Uh, good evening to both of you. Uh, Congressman Heck, uh, we will get to everything that happened on the Hill today. But your reaction to this breaking news and what does it mean that the New York Times says the White House is conducting the review in this manner? Well, as we have feared all along, we think that the White House is engaging in an attempt to discover the identity of the whistleblower, Ari. And the fact of the matter is that the Intelligence Community Whistleblower Protection Act affords the right of anonymity to the whistleblower. And let's remember why that is. The well, let me, let me the stop you there, just, just to understand. If you're saying federal law, you're, you're, a, you're both lawmakers, you write laws, you're saying federal law is to protect the identity. If the White House Counsel's Office, the White House lawyers, are doing something to try to expose the identity, are you suggesting then the story means that the White House lawyers may be trying to break the law? Add it to the list, Ari. But again, let's remember why it is that anonymity is extended to the whistleblower. Because it makes us safer. We want people within the national security environment and within the intelligence community to, to reveal, to point out, to disclose, to put a spotlight on wrongdoing so that we can stop it. And if we make them feel safe that they can come forward with the identification of wrongdoing, they'll be more likely to do, do so. Ergo, we'll be safer. Congresswoman? Well, I think what we're really seeing is a witch hunt undertaken by the White House. Uh, he wants to find out who is the whistleblower for one reason and one reason only, so he can besmirch that individual, can tear that person down, and can do what he does to so many other people who challenge him, and that is to destroy him. Uh, we want to make sure that doesn't happen. That's why we were very clear with the inspector general uh, that we wanted to make absolutely certain that the identity of this whistleblower would be protected because reprisals are commonplace when whistleblowers come forward, and yet they are true heroes and sheroes in this country. Uh, and Congresswoman, turning to the, the reason we requested both of you this, this dramatic uh, meeting today, we heard the speaker debrief on it afterward, um, but walk us through what happened in that caucus meeting. Uh, we didn't expect that there will be no vote until and unless there's ultimately a, a vote on the articles of impeachment themselves? So both um, Denny and I were still in the hearing, uh, the interview with um, the um, individual, Mr. Kent. And so I was not part of that uh, caucus briefing. Uh, that hearing that we were engaged in went on for, as you know, 10 hours. So uh, I can't really speak to the caucus, except to say that I think the speaker is doing what she does best. She is protecting the caucus and making sure that the Constitution is protected as well. And that's why we are pursuing this particular investigation with the kind of alacrity mm -hmm. that it deserves. Uh, and Congressman Heck, turning to, to what, what your colleague mentions, these witnesses coming forward, Fiona Hill and George Kent, and then we've seen Giuliani, OMB, DOD, and the Vice President's Office, on the other hand, refuse to provide information to your committees. Um, how, how do you view that distinction? Uh, and what, what did you learn today that you can tell us about? Well, first of all, let's acknowledge the bravery, the profiles and courage of the individuals who have come forward and complied with the legally authorized subpoena, Ari. These people are true American heroes, and they're doing a great service to America. So that's the first and most important thing. Secondly, with respect to the president ordering his employees to refuse to participate or to comply with the legally authorized subpoena. The chairman has made it very clear that he is going to take that as an act of obstruction uh, of the United States Congress and their lawful discharge of their Article I responsibilities. And number two, as a tacit acknowledgment of guilt, because clearly they're hiding something. It only adds to the case against them. You say what is a tacit acknowledgment of guilt? Just the fact that they won't come in? They're hiding something. The fact that they won't provide the documents, the fact that they won't come in, the fact that they won't comply with a legally authorized subpoena means to us that they don't want to share information that they think would be incriminating. And they don't have that right. Uh, and Congresswoman, what are you learning from these witnesses? We went over some of the highlights tonight. And some of them, as is always the case, boil down to what has come out uh, from reports and what is dramatic, and certainly in the case of Mr. Bolton. Uh, but what else can you tell us are your takeaways? I think what we are most concerned about is the shadow government that was being run by Rudy Giuliani and the president 
um, not placing the interests of our national security or our diplomats and foreign service officers, uh, who I think in the end are going to be seen as uh, pursuing one uh, approach, which is in fact what our consistent approach has been with foreign countries. And then you have this rogue operation with uh, Rudy Giuliani and the president. I, I'm deeply concerned that what we have here uh, is a major crisis in the State Department, in our Foreign Service. And I think as uh, we heard from um, Ms. Hill yesterday, uh, it becomes a situation where if you cannot rely on your ambassadors uh, overseas uh, to be trusted because the president is undermining them or has a shadow operation running, then we really have a, a problem. And Congresswoman, these have, have been famously closed door sessions. Uh, and we've heard about the, the precedent for that and how that provides uh, evidence gathering without the glare of the lights and television and the rest. Um, I wonder, for what we haven't learned yet, when and how do you see that coming out? Uh, if you refer to the, if your committee refers to judiciary or there are articles of impeachment, will that underlying material see the light of day? It would be my, certainly my hope that we will make those transcripts available. I think the reason why we've held these closed sessions for these interviews is so that we can independently uh, interview each of these individuals and not have their testimony somehow coordinated. And that is in the best interest of making sure that the truth comes out. So in the end, I'm sure that most of this will be made available to the public. Mm. Congressman Heck? Well, Ari, first of all, these are depositions. These aren't hearings. And we're going to follow the rules of best practices for investigation. We're after the facts. We're not after having a circus. We don't want witnesses coordinating with one another. And I need remind you, Ari, that even though this is unclassified, it's held in a secure uh, facility, and everybody in the room has a security clearance mm -hmm. because of the sensitive nature of the discussion that we're having. It's possible that there might be an accidental a release of classified information just within the context of the conversation. We don't want that to happen. But let's back up here and understand this is a perfect analogy to the criminal justice system with investigation as step one, a charging decision or indictment step two, and a jury as step three. We're in the investigation portion. And if we get if we get to the part where the Judiciary Committee takes up articles of impeachment. That will be public. All the underlying material will be made available. Their deliberations will be public. Same on the floor if there is a vote taken. And then if that passes to the Senate, the same in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So we're in the investigation phase, it's... not the circus phase. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, and your reminders, your expertise on, uh, on how it works on the inside, I think, is, is really educational to all of us. Uh, Congresswoman Speer, Congressman Heck, thanks to both of you. Thank you, Ari. Appreciate Thank you, it. Ari. Up next tonight, there is more breaking news we got in the last few minutes. It concerns the